Good morning. That's all right. I was going to say, at least you made it. Oh, bulletin. Good morning, everybody. And uh, got our announcements on the on the in your bulletin or up on the on the on the monitor here. And the youth group is March fourth, six thirty to eight. Right, Will? Will said yes. And uh, United Methodist Women is March twenty eighth at six o'clock. Oh, did it move? Did it move? Okay. Well, then just forget about the United Methodist Women one. We'll figure it out. We got time. It's still February, so don't worry about March. Is it moved? Okay, it's not the 28th. Forget that. All right. 21st? Okay. Um, There. Just like that. I don't know what you guys are talking about. It says 21st. Thanks, Jim. Uh, and then uh, board game night is, uh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, come out to the board game night. It's March 8th. You can bring your favorite board game and uh, come on out. Uh, let's see what we can do. And Cluster Hymn Sing is March 10th. That'll be at the Haleyville Church. So um, those are our those events. Other ones, we got more? Oh, of course we do. Confirmation classes, well, began uh, last week. So it's at 6 p.m. Uh, next one's 21st, is it? Oh, no, the first one was the 21st. So the next one's this next Wednesday, be the next three. So, and then we're having Bible study at the end of, uh, after that, at 7 p.m. So the mission collection is going to support the Heislerville Food Pantry. You hear that up there? Heislerville Food Pantry this month. Got it. Okay. I straighten that out, Jackie. See that? All right. Working on it. Okay. And choir practice. Uh, there is no choir practice till March 3rd. So, and the women's uh, breakfast is uh, now Saturday, March 16th at 9 a.m. at Suey Hall. Uh, all women are welcome to attend and encouraged to bring a breakfast treat to share. And Johnny Ann will be the guest speaker. So come on out. And we got more, Jim? Or Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, no, we did quite a bit. And the next one is blank. So if anybody... Um, does anybody else have any announcements? I think we got most of them. Yes. Flags. I'm really good at that. Um, the Easter egg hunt is going to happen again this year, uh, again at the Cox Family Farm. They're opening that up to uh, youth that you know, uh, young kids. I'm asking for the congregation to donate hard-boiled eggs or candies to put inside plastic eggs. We do have plastic eggs, and this year I anticipate adding games in front of the hunt for the little kids, because we had fun with the older kids last year. Yes, my favorite story. So anyway, uh, keep in mind, March 23rd, that's always the Saturday before Palm Sunday. Okay, and um, let me see. So we got that, we got that. Yeah, and the Easter Bunny, he's going to need uh, like two escorts this year because one wasn't enough last year, especially when I get back to the firehouse and somebody thinks I'm somebody else. 
I'm still traumatized. <laughs> Say, it's just, it, it was, it was horrible. So, um, sorry. <laughs> and uh, any other announcements? And if not, let's begin our service with the call to worship. It's found printed in the bulletin. If you're able, please stand. <laughs> Glorify the Lord. The Lenten journey has just begun. Place your trust in God who walks with you. Amen. Where he leads me, number 338. pray together. Oh Lord, our God, you are always so ready to bestow your gift 
gifts on us than we are to seek them. Good morning. Today's Old Testament reading is Genesis 17, found on page 17, and 1 to 7, and 15 to 16. Ab Abram was 99 years old when the Lord appeared to him again and said, I, the God all powerful, I am the God all powerful. If you obey me and always do right, I will keep my solemn promise to you and give you more descendants than you can be counted. Abram bowed and hit with his face to the ground, and God said, I promise that you will be the father of many nations. That's why I now change your name from Abram to Abraham. I will give you a lot of descendants, and in the future they will become great. Nation, become great nations. Some of them will give, even be kings. I will always keep your promise. Always keep the promise I have made to you and your descendants, because I am your God and their God. Abraham's wife, Abraham, your wife's name will now be Sarah instead of Sari. I will bless her, and, and you will have a son by her, and she will become the mother of nations, and some of her descendants will even be kings. Good morning again. Our New Testament reading this morning is Romans 4, 13 to 25, found on page 1369 in your pew Bible. The promise is for all who have faith. God promised Abraham and his descendants that he would give them the world. This promise wasn't made because Abraham had obeyed a law, but because his faith in God made him acceptable. If Abraham and his descendants were given this promise because they had obeyed a law, then faith would mean nothing, and the promise would be worthless. God becomes angry when his law was broken, but where there isn't a law, it cannot be broken. Everything depends on faith in God, so that God's promise is assured by his great kindness. This promise isn't only for Abraham's descendants who have the law. It is for all who are Abraham's descendants because they have faith just as he did. Abraham is the, is the ancestor of us all. The scriptures say that Abraham would become the ancestor of many nations. This promise was made to Abraham because he had faith in God, who raises the dead to life and creates new things. God promised Abraham a lot of descendants, and when it all seemed hopeless, Abraham still had faith in God and became the ancestor of many nations. Abraham's faith never became, became weak, not even when he was nearly a hundred years old. He knew that he was almost dead and that his wife Sarah could not have children. But Abraham never doubted or questioned God's promise. His faith made him strong, and he gave all the credit to God. Abraham was certain that God could do what he had promised, so God accepted him, just as we read in the scriptures. But these words were not written only for Abraham. They were written for us, since we will ha also be accepted because of our faith in God, who raised our Lord Jesus to life. God gave Jesus to die for our sins, and he raised him to life so that we would be made acceptable to God. The word of God for the people of God. Okay, our responsive reading is found on page 753 in the Methodist Seminole. It is Psalm 22, verses 25 to 31. You may rise if you are able.
From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My the poor shall eat and be satisfied. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. All who go down to the dust shall bow down, bow before the Lord, and I shall live for God. Each generation shall tell of the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn. Please be seated, and um, I don't know. If, if you're visiting and you really don't understand Lieutenant Latte, it started during the pandemic. A uh, little boy jumped up in the back of his dad's pickup truck, and he held up a Wawa coffee cup holder like a mask, and I asked him if he was Captain Coffee Cup, so I wanted to be Lieutenant Latte. So this one, uh, I'm playing some of our our best of this has never been played in church actually because this is this one's from 2020 i don't think we were back in church we weren't back in church yet in 2020 were we no no right so i think this is before that so this is a little bit longer than usual but uh it's it's my best of and and it's never been here so let's 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 take a look okay. november 29th 2020 was the Based on Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37, Jesus was crucified and died for our sins. But when his body was placed in a tomb, after on the third day, his whole body and soul were reunited and he was raised up from the tomb. He was given a perfect body from then on. Death could not hold Jesus down. Even though he was even though he died, he rose again. God raised him from the dead and he spent time talking to his disciples, telling them uh, about things that he had talked about. And before he died, he told them that he was going to die and rise again. And that, and then when he went into heaven, he kept warning them, you must pay attention. One day I will return. As Christians, we're always waiting for that return of Jesus. So as we wait for that return of Jesus, Jesus said it will come like a thief in the night. No one knows when he will return. Only the Father, only God the Father knows. Jesus doesn't know when it's going to happen. The angels doesn't, don't know when it's going to happen. And that's what he said in Mark. So he said, it's like you have to, it's like someone, a master leaves his house and he leaves the servant there to watch the door. And he says, stay here and watch the door. If the master comes home and finds him sleeping, that's going to be a problem. Jesus doesn't want to find us sleeping. And by sleeping, what Jesus means is you could go to bed at night. That's okay. That's not what we're talking about. But sleeping is not paying attention to Jesus and not paying attention to the Bible, not listening to your parents. That is are all ways where we are sleeping and we're not paying attention. And if Jesus comes back and no one knows when that is, and if he comes back 
and we're doing something we shouldn't be doing, we're going to have to explain that to Jesus. If Jesus comes back when you're arguing with your parents, you're going to have to explain to Jesus why you were arguing with your parents. If you were doing something else that you weren't supposed to be doing and Jesus comes back, he's going to know. And he already knows. Even if he doesn't come back, he knows when we're doing things that are not right. So we don't want to fall asleep. He also said, if, if the master of a house knew when the thief was coming, he wouldn't have gone to sleep because he would have waited for the thief. So we always have to be ready for when Jesus returns. Now, what I have is a short video after this, another Captain Coffee Cup video, and you're going to see what happens to Lieutenant Latte when he, when he falls asleep. Here's that video. Hello everyone, I'm Lieutenant Latte, and Captain Coffee Cup gave me a special job to do today. It's really dark out. It's nighttime. That's the moon up there, right there. That's the moon. And he told me to watch the silver bullet for a little while. He left the silver bullet running. Here we are in the middle of, of Dorchester out in the woods. You can see the trees back there and everything. Uh, and Captain Coffee Cup gave me the job of watching the truck. The silver bullet. But boy, it's it's really late and dark. You know what? I know what I could do. I know exactly what I could do. I could get in the back of the silver bullet over here. And ah, this is perfect. Ah, that's why they call this the bed of a pickup truck. I can come right here and I can take a quick nap. I must have fallen asleep. Oh no. Oh, Captain Coffee Cup's gonna be mad. I think somebody took the truck. I don't know where we are. Oh, I'm definitely not in Dorchester anymore. Oh boy. Captain Coffee Cup's gonna be really, really mad. He told me not to fall asleep with the truck running, and I did. Now I gotta figure out where I am and how to get this truck back home. Oh boy, we're in a lot of trouble now. This is definitely not Dorchester. Fall asleep, things uh, don't work out the way we want. So, um, our, our scripture lesson today is from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Jesus began telling his disciples what would happen to him. He said, the nation's leaders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law of Moses will make the Son of Man suffer terribly. He will be rejected and killed, but three days later, he will rise to life. Then Jesus explained clearly what he meant. Peter took Jesus aside and told him to stop talking like that. But when Jesus turned and saw the disciples, he corrected Peter, and he said to him, Satan, get away from me. You are thinking like everyone else and not like God. Then Jesus told the crowd and the disciples to come closer, and he said, If any of you want to be my followers, you must forget about yourself, and you must take up your cross and follow me. 
And if you want to save your life, you will destroy it. But if you give up your life for me and for the good news, you will save it. What will you gain if uh, what will you gain if you own the whole world but destroy yourself? What could you give to get back your soul? Don't be ashamed of me and my message among these unfaithful and sinful people. If you uh, if you are the Son of Man, will be ashamed of you when he comes in glory, uh, in the glory of his Father and with the holy angels. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our fortress. Amen. Jesus said, if any of you wish to follow me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Jesus is telling the people around him that faith is a total commitment. There really is no halfway faith. Uh, one way, um, here's the best way I could explain what total commitment, total faith is like. It's something that I'm sure I'll never do. I never would want to do it, but like skydiving, okay? I'm never doing it. And it's a perfectly good plane. Why jump out of it? Doesn't make sense. But once you leave that plane skydiving, that's total commitment. There's no, oh, I changed my mind. I'm going back, like you say. So that is what Jesus is talking about, a total commitment to him where you can't turn back. The only other way I could describe uh, describe what total commitment would be like, um, just become a Methodist pastor for a while. And, and you'll see, because once you think you got things figured out, God gives you some new challenge and presents you with something new. Uh, Peter had faith in Jesus. And he thought he had it all figured out. He was just so certain. You know, just the verses before these ones we read, Peter was the one who said, who answered Jesus. When Jesus said, who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. He had it all figured out. He was being praised by Jesus only moments later uh, to be rebuked by Jesus. Um, Peter had the nerve to tell Jesus the way things should be. Um, Peter's rebuke did not display total faith in Jesus anymore. Uh, questioning is a normal response to a life-changing event. But telling God the way things should be is never a good idea. God sees the complete picture when we only see a little glimpse of things. Abraham was an example of someone with great faith. We read about him in the Old and New Testament today. And in the letter uh, to the Romans, we catch a glimpse of what great faith is. Uh, in Romans, we find Ab Abraham did not weaken in his faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was near a hundred years old. And, the, and his wife, was barren. Um, no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. As we totally commit our lives to Jesus, our faith will grow, and we learn to hope beyond hope, and that's what true faith is. When we think we have everything all figured out, that's when our faith becomes weak. Um, so I was trying to think of one other example, and I was thinking about a, a tree growing. Um, Jesus said in, in Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verses 18 through 19, he asked, What is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It's like a mustard seed, 
which a man took and planted in his garden. And it grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches. In other words, faith is something that grows, and it grows large. There was a couple of times I was um, out in the woods. I, I noticed just about every oak tree around is about this big or this big, right? And then every once in a while, I'd walk through the woods, and I'd find an oak tree like three foot around. And you're like, how did that happen? And I could look around, and I'd see like a little depression in the ground where there used to be a little bit of a cellar or a foundation. And then I realized, oh, this tree is here because this house was here and it kind of protected it from being clear cut like all the trees around. And then I just sit there, yeah, come on, you ever see a big tree and you just look at it and you stare at it and you think about it and you wonder how did it get so big? And there's got to be more than just because it was near a home that it got this big or it was in a protected area. Uh, first of all, let's talk about uh, farmer people. Uh, we need soil, right? We need soil for the tree to grow in. Um, and there's something else. As that tree grows and you're looking at it and you just see all the branches branching out and just sucking up that sunlight, it needs sunlight to grow as well. So what does it take for us as to grow as Christians? First, we need to be like that big tree that's next to a home being protected. We need to be close to God. In other words, we need to have faith in God. Faith is what keeps us close to God. In Proverbs, we read, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Faith is a seed that's planted in our hearts, and our hearts are like the soil that helps our faith to grow. But uh, besides the soil, the tree needs two things. It needs healthy soil. It needs nutrients in the soil, and it needs water. And the Bible for us, God's word for us, is that is the nutrients we need, and it's the water that we need to grow. Remember uh, when Jesus met the Samaritan woman at the well? She was there getting water. And he's like, you're going to have to come back every day for water because you're always going to be thirsty. But I have water to give you. That will make that will make it so that you're never thirsty again. And that were that water that he was talking about was his words, the same words that are recorded for us in the Bible. And once our faith grows like a tree, uh, branches spout out, and we could soak up more and more of God's light. And we need to soak in the light and the love of God. Faith, um, faith soaks up God's light, and God's light brings revelation. It brings a revelation of just how awesome our God is. Um, that video, I guess you saw, is a little bit something special that's not in part one or part two. It's what happened in between part one and part two. Uh, that was up in Cherry Hill. For some reason, during the middle of the pandemic, my son decided to buy a house because it was a good time to buy. And then he wanted two TVs at Best Buy. So we had to drive him all the way up to Cherry Hill um, to get these two uh, big mammoth TVs. Remember that, Denise? And oh, it was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And then we had to try to figure out how to get out of that lot. And as we tried to figure that out, um, I went the wrong way, of course, and we went down and we went through this intersection. It looked a little sketchy, and we went down to the uh, a roundabout. We turned around, and we came back, and we're coming through that intersection, and there's a car upside down, and it was an accident just in that time that we drove up and back. And it just made me think of God's protection for us. Uh, I, uh, some people would say, wow, you were real lucky, you know? I mean, you were right there almost when it happened. Um, but 
I don't believe in luck. I believe in God's protection because of my faith. So faith is that seed in our heart, and our hearts are like the soil that helps that faith to grow. Um, and as I was thinking about all this, and I was reading, once the faith, once our faith grows like a tree, the branches sprout out, we suck up God's light, and we see more how awesome God is. And then after I wrote all this, I found this psalm. And it reminded me just about what I was talking about in Psalm chapter 36, verses 8 and 9. Uh, it says, they feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of delights. For with you is a fountain of light, and in your light we see light. God's light is the revelation that comes from the Bible, and we could just soak that up all the time. God did not give us commandments just so that we could be punished for breaking them. God gave us commandments so that when we follow his word, we could have an abundant life in God. Um, a tree, I don't think a tree, I'm not really sure. I don't know if a tree can think. I, no, a tree can't think, I don't think. Uh, science people, could a tree think? Okay, but anyway, pretend it could. But a tree wouldn't worry about surrendering itself to the sun. It just bathes in it. Now, a tree really has no choice but to bask in the glory of the sun. But you and I, we have a choice. And that choice is, do we surrender all we are and all we hope to be? Will we surrender that to God? Or will we be like Peter and we'll just know better and we could tell God what to do? But if we surrender all to Jesus, we, we can know this. God is the creator of beauty and God can take care of our lives and make something beautiful out of them. But only if we are willing to surrender our life to God. The truth is anything we try to save we will lose. But anything we share, we will regain. And that which we surrender to God, God will bless that in a wondrous way. God will transform what we surrender into something beautiful and worthy. So, is it time for you to completely surrender your life to God? And something to think about as we sing our next hymn, which is number um, 354, I Surrender All. So if you're able, please rise and think about how much am I giving to God?
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Amen. 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 seated and uh, have the ushers ask all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us through this day our daily bread. I don't want to grab this color book. I'm really bad with colors. It's kind of a orangey pink to me. I don't know. So grab this book, a praise book, turn to page 219, and that's our closing hymn, Jesus Paid It All. make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.